Hi there, RC Girl here. Today I'm back with a video about the Desert Lizard internal spring shocks. These are 90 millimeter shocks from Yacht Racing. This is actually the second video in the series of my performance upgrades for the Traxxas TRX4. In my first one, I'll link it up here. I did an installation and test out of the Yacht Racing brass upgrade set and the middle axle housing set. I did a before and after trail comparison and we're gonna do something similar today for these. So I'll show you guys how I set them up. They're pretty new, so there's not a ton of videos on them, but I might try a couple different setup options. I'll show you guys how I install them in the Traxxas TRX4 and then we'll do a before and after trail comparison. Let's try them out today. Stay tuned. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Here you're gonna find RC reviews, tips and tricks, run videos, unboxings, and other things related to RC. So consider subscribing if you guys wanna see more in the future. RC Mart sent these to me to try out. So let's dive in. I'll show you guys what they look like, how I set them up, and then we'll install them on the Traxxas TRX4. Zoom on in. So here are two shocks that I already set up, and there's actually a couple ways to set up the piggyback, but this is the piggyback chamber. It comes with the hose and connects to the main chamber. So let's do an unboxing of one of them so you can see everything that's included in the kit. First, it has some pretty basic setup instructions. These weren't super helpful to me because it didn't tell you really, do you need to bleed the air out of them? But basically it just says add oil to the chamber and add oil to the shock body. And then next we have the two clamps that hold on the piggyback chamber comes with all the installation hardware and some extra O-rings and also the hardware to install it onto your car. Here are the piggyback chambers and the hoses and these come with a nice little rubber gasket. I've heard that shocks like these in the past have leaked oil, which is not a great thing. So it looks like they're nice and well sealed and there's gonna be a tight seal on the chamber and the hose. So we'll have to try that out. Here's the shocks themselves. So it looks like you can unscrew the bottom here and rebuild the shock if you need to. And you can also unscrew this top piece. And again, there's a little rubber washer here and the spring. They come not filled with oil. Some people actually run these dry with no spring whatsoever. Some people run them with the spring and oil in both chambers. And some people run them with just the spring and no oil at all. So those setups to me sound a little bit crazy. I am used to the shocks with oil and springs. So we'll have to try out some different setup options and see how they perform. The piggyback clamps on here with the screw. You tighten that and you can adjust the height of it. I do really like the shocks that come stock on the Traxxas TRX4, but we'll have to try out something different and see if we get better performance. You're gonna need a couple things for the install. I have my electric drill and my hex bits, and then we have some shock oil. So I have a couple different weight options. We might have to test out a couple options and do some tuning, but first I'm just gonna start with a lower weight oil. All right, let's get to the install. First, what I went ahead and did was take off the stock shocks on the front, and then I went ahead and completely set up one of these to my preferred liking. So I'll show you guys how I did that, but first I wanted to do a little comparison. I am running the same shock weight oil in both of the shocks, both the stock ones and the new ones. And this is 400 CST. This equates to about 30 to 35 weight. I'll show you guys the rebound rate on these. And the rebound is how quickly the shock goes back to its normal position after compression. So I'm gonna fully compress these. And this one looks like it's a little bit faster. And then we can do a little spring rate comparison. So I'm gonna show you guys how much pressure it takes to fully compress the new ones, and then compare that to what it takes to fully compress one of the stock ones. Okay, so our new ones, if we fully compress it, it's about 21, around 2100. And then for our stock ones, we get full compression around 19, around 1900 it looks like. It takes a little bit more force to compress the new ones fully. To me these also seem really, really smooth. If anything, they might seem a little bit too stiff. So we're gonna have to try them out on the trail definitely. So how I set these up is I tried to get the least amount of air throughout the entire system. So ideally you'd wanna be able to bleed the air out, but the way it's designed, you can't really get all the air out completely, unfortunately. So I'll show you guys what I did to get most of the air out, and I feel like this is a really nice and solid setup. So you're gonna start with your empty shock, comes with a spring inside of it, 
and you can also unscrew the bottom component here. So there's all of these little O-rings and they say to put a little oil on them and then seal that up. So tighten that up completely. Make sure that that's not gonna come loose. You don't want it to leak any oil. And then I put the spring in and then I filled it with oil completely as much as you can. You're gonna to wanna to overfill it and then it's gonna kinda of spill over spill out the top there. So that's totally fine. We actually want it to spill over like that. And then what I did is I took the hose and I filled it with oil until it came out the other side. So it looks like it's starting to come out the other side here. And then I attached it to the shock body. Oops, and now I'm getting oil all over the place. And then I took this extra chamber, take the bottom off, fill that chamber completely with oil, set that aside, and then I attach this piece here to this one. And then this is where you're gonna do the bleeding as much as you can. And so I compressed the shock here, and you're gonna see some air bubbles come out. So just try and get as many out as you can to see a couple popping. So I'm holding it down, release it. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're filling it back with oil as you release the pressure on the piston. And then you put in your piggyback chamber, trying not to get any air bubbles the best you can. Ideally it'd be great if this bottom piece here screwed off. It looks like it does, but it actually doesn't. That would allow you more volume to bleed all the air out and then refill it and then seal it off but we did the best we can with the design. And then we're gonna clean this guy up, make sure all of the joints are nice and tight so we don't get any leakage. Yeah, that feels really nice. And then you tighten down the clamp. And there you have it. These feel really similar, so that's great. So we're gonna do our next two. So now we're gonna install the shocks on the TRX4 and it's super, super simple. There's a screw here and there's a screw here holding on the bottom and we're gonna take the mounting hardware. So one of the longer little beveled things and then the other half of it. And that's gonna be what the screw on the top goes through. This does seem to wiggle around a little bit. So I don't know if that's supposed to be that way or if we need to flip one of the other things around, but we'll try that out first and see if I need to change that. Then we'll do the bottom. You know what, I'm gonna reverse one of these. Seems to be wiggling around too much for my liking. Okay, let's do the other side. All right, so we got all our shocks installed in the TRX4. This thing is looking super, super sick. I also did get a new workbench from Home Depot. This thing is adjustable height, and this is gonna be my new studio. I'm excited to have a new space strictly devoted to RC. Before we dive into the shocks further, I did wanna show you guys, I did get a cool new $18 FPV cam, and I popped it on the Defender body. You attach a little battery here, and you're able to drive it with FPV goggles. Super, super cool. I'll have to do a separate video on that and how I'm setting it up if you guys also wanna set your car up with an FPV camera. So a few notes about the setup. I was able to bleed most of the air out of the shocks. The way the shocks have to mount onto the Traxxas TRX4, unfortunately the hoses have to kind of come out awkwardly this way. I did try and install them with the piggyback chamber upside down and it kind of aligned the hose a little bit better, but that started to hit the tires when they were on. And I can't mount them too high because the Traxxas TRX4 Defender body has these wheel wells and it got in the way. So it's a little bit awkward here. Seems like this was the only setup that I could really get to work with these. I do wish that I could cut the hoses down a tad. I don't know if it's gonna cause issues or leakage, so I'm just gonna keep them as is. I'm a little bit worried about them catching on things or snagging, ripping your hose off, and then your shocks are basically kaputs. So we'll see if that becomes an issue long-term. Another thing is the mounting hardware it came with to install the shocks. 
Um, there's a little bit of play in it. I don't know if that's a bad thing. It's kind of nice to have your shocks move around a tad. I'll try that out on the trails and see if that's a good thing or a bad thing. They do feel really smooth though. I really like the dampening. So I did add 700 grams of brass weight and metal axle housings. So the rig is a lot heavier than when I had it stock. I think we're ready to take this outside on my backyard crawler course and do our before and after comparison. I got some footage of before I installed the new shocks with the stock shocks and took it outside on a couple features. We're gonna take it outside now again with the new shocks and do the comparison so stay tuned let's take it outside So what do you guys think about the shock comparison? I honestly can't tell much difference between the stock shocks and the Desert Lizard piggyback shocks. The stock shocks are already so, so good that they're kind of a stiff competition. <laughs> If you're upgrading from some not so great shocks, I think these are gonna be a great option for you because they are really comparable, but it's kind of a different look and feel if you want that scale look. I put these to the test over the past week or so. One thing I would recommend though, when you're setting them up that I didn't do when I was setting them up is to thread lock all the connections because you don't want those to come loose and leak oil. One week in, it doesn't look like it's leaking any oil, which is a good sign. What did you guys think about the trail comparison? Shoot me a comment below if you saw any differences, if you think one was better than the other. Thanks again to Ya yeah Racing for sending me the Desert Lizard internal spring piggyback shocks to try out on my Traxxas TRX4. So that's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in as always. If you wanna see more, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you later.